Hello everybody. The following tutorial you're about to view is brought to you in part by webdesignernews.com, offering curated stories and news for web designers and developers. Their content is specifically geared for people with interests like yours and mine. In this tutorial you can learn to create various folding content effects with click triggers and toggle mechanisms. Learning these visual effects can greatly enhance your front-end design work. The best part is, is that it's so simple to do that no third-party frameworks or libraries are needed. The code is slim and the visual effects are awesome. Let's take a look at one of the effects we will rig up in this tutorial so that you can get a better feel for the concept before we even begin. So in this little demo we have a menu button and when that menu button is clicked a little fold down menu appears and you can see that it has a 3D perspective effect to it and we gave it a toggle mechanism so that when the user clicks on it initially it opens and then if they click on the menu button again it closes and we achieve that through JavaScript but all the animation and the visual effects are CSS3 driven we're just going to use JavaScript to create the toggle mechanism and before we apply the visual effects for the animated folding, I'm just going to show you the content we're going to begin with in this document. We have a little bit of HTML which renders this and when we click the menu button nothing happens and nothing will happen when you click those either. So basically it's just the static content that you would have in place before you wanted to add these effects to it. So you can see we just have a nav element and that's the little menu that would fold down. And then we have a div with an ID of top bar and that's the dark top bar that you see going across the page and this little guy here is your nav element your navigation menu and then of course we have the menu button and that menu button is right here and in the style element for the document we have just some CSS very simple CSS to style those elements the way we want so all of the CSS we're beginning with and the HTML is very basic now let's go into the CSS from menu 1 and down at the very bottom we're going to add some properties that will help us achieve that effect. We're going to add the transform origin property. We're going to give it a value of 50% and 0% and I'm going to explain these values after we look at the example running and we'll also change those values so you can actually see what happens when you alter them. Next we add the transform property and we can give it any of the transform functions that we want. In this case I'm using the perspective and rotate x functions. Rotate x is the important function that makes it have a certain angle in 3D space because we're giving it an 800 pic pixel perspective. And we'll change these values so you can actually see what they do. But this rotate x starting at 90 degrees means that it will be in 90 degrees in 3D space meaning we won't even be able to see it because we'll be looking at it from its side and it has no thickness so we won't even see the element at first only when we change these degrees will we start to see that element fold down okay now the last thing we need in here for our menu one element that nav menu is the transition effect and that's what makes the animation happen the animated effect now what we're going to run a transition on is the transform property which is this guy right here so anytime any of these values are changed for the perspective or the rotate X, they're going to be animated changes. And we're going to run a duration of 0.3 seconds for the animation. The animation itself will be a linear animation. And you can use easing animations there if you want. And a zero second delay. Now at the end of the video, I'll take you to developphp.com where I have all of these CSS properties explained more in depth in the CSS code docs. But for now, let's just get the example working. And then once you see it all working, you can research things more in depth on your own, these specific properties. Now all that's left to do is add the few lines of JavaScript that's going to power the toggle mechanism for that little fold down menu. So actually, let's go down in the nav element and where it says data opened, we're going to change that to no because now by default, our data is not opened because we changed this the rotate X to 90 so we're not going to see it we're gonna see it from its top which is totally flat so we're not going to see it because we changed it to 90 degrees let me show you what I'm talking about 
you can see we don't see the menu, but then if I change this to zero, save, and then view it again in my favorite browser, I see the menu. Now what if I put that on 45? Then we'll have a 45 degree angle for that little menu. You see? So by default, this is going to be 90 degrees, so we can't see it at all. And then down here, data opened is going to be no, because the menu is closed. It's not showing. So we can change this value at any time through JavaScript. OK, so right under our style, we're going to put in a script element, go down a couple of lines, and close that script element. And the first thing we want in there is a function, and we'll name it toggle menu. You can use this for multiple menus, not only just one, because we're going to set it up dynamically. We're going to take in an argument of menu through that function. So open curly brace and close in curly brace. The first line inside the function, is we're going to establish a variable. We're going to name that variable menu. It's going to be equal to document.getElementById menu. And it's going to be referenced by this incoming argument of menu, which will be a string that represents the ID of the menu that we want to affect. In this case, we have nav ID menu 1. So what we can do is go into our button that controls the menu folding up and down. And right after our ID, we can just type in on click is equal to, and in between quotes, we copy our function name here, and we put it down here, and we open close parentheses, and in there, we're going to put a string in between single quotes of menu one. That way our JavaScript knows that this button is toggling menu one. So now what I'm gonna do at first, just so you can see how the script is gonna be set up, I'm just going to make that menu element that we just got in that variable, menu.style.transform property is going to be equal to rotate x of 0 degrees. That means it's going to come fully into view in an animated fashion. But we won't have the toggle mechanism just yet. So let's take a look at that. And when I click menu, it comes down. But I click menu again, and it doesn't go back up. So we have to just put a, a little bit of condition logic in place to make that happen. So what we'll do before we open that menu is we'll type in if, open close parentheses, open in curly brace, and then go down under this line and close in curly brace. Let's indent that correctly. So the evaluation logic within our if condition needs to read if the menu dataset dot opened is equal to no, then we want to put the correct rotate x value to open the menu. So we set it at zero degrees. Then we want to make sure that we change this data opened attribute to yes. So let's go ahead and just take this reference right here and we'll make that equal to yes. And this will allow us to have toggle mechanism by putting an else condition in place. Now once that else condition's in place, you can just copy those two lines that are in the if condition and then we'll change this to 90 degrees. And what that'll do is close the menu back up if it's not equal to no. If it happens to be equal to yes, we want to close the menu back up and then change this to no again. So open becomes no again when you close the menu back up. So does that make sense? So if our data open property is equal to no, we just basically want to open the menu and then change the data opened property to yes. So this will be changed to a yes value. Then the next time that same button is clicked, this else condition will fire off to go ahead and close the menu back up. We make sure we change this uh, data open property or attribute to no. And that's what gives you the toggle mechanism. So let's go ahead and check that in our favorite browser. You see? Perfect toggle mechanism. Now I'm starting to lean away from doing menus with hover effects because I don't like the hover effect anymore because people on mobile and tablets and uh, touch screens, they actually have to click things with their finger. So I feel like it's a more universal experience for all users on all devices if everybody just has to click things to open and close them like that. And you also can't get a, uh, a toggle mechanism such as this using hover effects because when you hover over it, it'll open. When you hover away, it will close back up. And that functionality can be put in just uh, pure CSS. You wouldn't need any JavaScript for that. So the only reason we added JavaScript to this little application is to give the click trigger. 
I wanted a click trigger. I don't like the hover trigger anymore, so I give it a click trigger, and the user knows they're opening a menu, and they know to close it again. They click this, and you can even have a little arrow that goes that changes from an up or down position within this menu. Let's take a quick second to check out our sponsor's website. If you're like me, you spend hours every morning browsing through hundreds of posts on your RSS feed, hoping to stumble across relevant news stories. Now these guys built webdesignernews.com to provide web designers and developers with a single location to discover the latest and most significant stories on the web. They search through hundreds of posts on blogs, social media, and news channels to deliver the most essential stories of the day. Their content covers quality news, fresh tools and apps, case studies, code demos, inspiration posts, videos, and more. Now, if you're too busy to visit daily, you can sign up for the newsletter. Their newsletter, which you can sign up for right here, features the most shared stories of the day. And you can also favorite stories that you like to find them more easily later. I think it's a great service that I visit myself, and I thought you guys would dig it too. All this code that we put together here is going to be available for you guys to copy and paste so you have something to start from. If you can't see all the code in the video, we have it in copy-paste form as well. You can just view the description of this video and you'll see a link. And that link is where the code resides. Now what we're going to do is go up in the CSS and we're going to tweak some things to make it behave a little bit differently according to our needs. So right now we see that we have a menu that when we open it, it folds down from the front. Now what you can do is you can go in here and change this to negative 90 degrees and then up here change this to negative in your CSS as well. So it starts at a negative 90 degrees and it goes to zero and then back to a negative 90 degrees to close it. Let's see what happens. See? You can see it comes down from the back. It folds down from the back instead of from the front. So you can easily change the way that folds down. Now what if you wanted to fold out from the left or from the right? You could just change this rotate X to rotate Y. Let's change all of these rotate X's to rotate Y. Save the file, view in our favorite browser. And actually we have to, and the reason why it's spinning open like that, hey, maybe that's an effect that you want, I don't know. But we'll change its, uh, transform origin so to get the proper effect we'll just change transform origin from 50 percent zero to zero fifty and this will make it open just like a door so let's take a look at that see how it opens and closes like a swinging door now the reason why you saw it spinning from the middle was because we didn't have the transform origin set up correctly. So what if I put this on 50 as well? Let's see all the ways that we can adjust this. See how it spins from the middle now? So that's more like something that would spin on a central, a uh, centered axle or axis. Okay, let's put all this back to the rotate X. Now let's take a closer look at this transform origin. Let's make them both zero. So zero X, zero Y. You see how it has a funny angle on it, and it doesn't really fold down centered. It kind of has an angle on one side. And if we put these values all the way up to 100, you see what happens? It folds up from the bottom instead of folding down from the top. And it has a funny angle on it. But if we change this one to 50 and leave that one at 100, you see? Now it folds up centered. There's no funny angle on it and it folds up from the bottom in a centered fashion. All right, let's get it back to how it was beginning. All right, so now I've got the code, how it was when we first made the menu. So if you just completely remove the transform origin property, it's just going to spin from the center. It's gonna rotate from the center and it won't seem like it's folding down from the top. You see, it just rotates from the center. And that's really an effect that you don't want in this case, but you want might want that kind of effect in other cases. For instance, just popping up a little 
magic overlay window on the page, you might want it to fold in just like that. We set it to 50 and 0, and that gives us our folding down effect. Now let's take a quick look at the perspective. If I change this to 0, and down here, let's change these all to 0, you'll notice that you don't get any 3D perspective effect on that. It just slides down, and it kind of stretches itself, sliding up and down. And then maybe that's an effect that you also want instead of a 3D perspective. If we change this to something like 200, you'll see that you get a really warped 3D perspective. So the higher you make the perspective, the smoother it's going to look. That's why I started on 800 because I like the way it looked at 800. So you see that? That's crazy, right? You would almost need sound effects to put that in place. Like... <laughs> okay, anyway. So I, I put them on 800 just because for no reason except that I thought it looked decent at an 800 pixel perspective. It's not such a dramatic effect. But you still get the 3D perspective effect. Okay, so the code here and all the little ways that we tweak the code should give you a really good understanding of all the different ways you can fold content. You can fold content boxes open and closed like a door. You can swing them around from a, a central axis or a center axis point. You can also have angles on it and all kind of different cool effects. And these don't have to be powered by a toggle mechanism. You can just have things open and close with separate buttons. For instance, you can have one button that says open and then another button right next to it that says closed. But I like toggle mechanisms, so that's why we set up the JavaScript this way. And if you didn't have the need for a toggle mechanism, you would need just this one line instead of these six or seven lines. All right, that about does it. That shows you all kind of different ways that you can fold content on your web pages. And remember that all of the code that we produced in this video will be available. If you click the video description, there's a link where you can copy paste this code. But you might just be able to write it all yourself just by watching the video. And I'd like to thank our sponsor once again, webdesignernews.com, for helping me bring this educational material to everyone free.